the principal root or the principal square root of 36 times 4. Okay, uh, well, what is 36 times 4? Okay, 144, the principal root of 144 is 12. Now, watch what happens if I split this into two square roots. We'd have the square root of 36 and then times the square root of 4. Well, the 30, square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of 4 is 2, and when you multiply them, you get the same answer. So one radical can be written as two radicals. Okay, one radical can be written as two radicals, and two radicals can be written as one radical. So we have another property here that says two radicals can be written as one radical, okay, when you're multiplying, and vice versa, one radical can be written as two. All right. So seeing that this two radicals can be written as one, and you're going to take five times seven and write what? With one radical, you're going to have 35, the principal root of 35. Same thing here. Two times 19 is 38. So you'd have one radical with a 38. Okay. And you'd have a radical sign, a principal root sign, a principal square root of 11p. Two radicals written as one. Same thing here. The two radicals are written as one. You're going to have 11 times 7, 77 with your x and your y and your z under one radical. Okay? So now let's think about this for a minute. We're going to have 5 times minus 4 is a minus 20. The two radicals are written as one, okay, with an 8 times 6, which is what? 8 times 6 is what? 48, okay? Now, uh, you could write one radical as 2. You could say 4 times 12 or 16 times 3. I know what the square root of 16 is, don't you? Okay? Square root of 16 is 4, isn't it? So I'm going to write 16 times 3. In place of 48, I'm going to write 16 times 3. And then I'm going to split this into two radical signs. So I'll have my minus 20. I'll have the square root of 16 and the square root of 3. Okay, now the square root of 16 is 4, so I'm going to have negative 20 times 4 times the square root of 3. And 20 times 4 is 80, so you're going to get a negative 80, the square root of 3.